and welcome to this new video. Merry Christmas if you celebrate today, hence by the Christmas tree um, and the topic of this video is Christmas Day. I love Christmas so much. I am kind of like Buddy the Elf in booktuber form <laughs> and I have been completely, completely spoiled today. Not only have I got this super cute jumper, cozy knitted cardigan, but I also have got a crap ton of books that I just could not resist talking about by the Christmas tree, um, whenever I've actually made myself look cute for once rather than lounging around in my sweatpants. So, without further ado, let's chat about some books I got this Christmas. First of all, I kind of want to talk about like a book adjacent gift that isn't actually a book, but you'll see exactly what I mean, how this is book related. It is a book sleeve! Look at it, just one more chapter. It has a little sleepy cat, a little diary, a stack of books, some cute candles, cup of tea. Look at this, look at this bookworm. Like, that is stinking cute. Um, I have wanted a book sleeve for the longest time because I love reading when like out and about. I am that person um, that has a book in every tote bag and every handbag that I carry, but that means a lot of them get beat up and the corners are kind of like, folded in and it's it's not the vibe so my books leave and I mean my books are protected and it's so cute and so thoughtful from my parents I love it so much but our first book is in here <laughs> so I put one in already it's one I'm currently reading I don't know why I'm out of breath I'm just so excited um to be talking about books but my aunt gave me this one it is her favorite book of all time um because I've gotten I've always been into books, but so much more into books over the past few years. She wanted to get it for me for Christmas and share that with me, which is so cute. And that is Watcher by Dean Koontz. I had never heard of this book. I've heard of Dean Koontz because um, she's talked about him so much as her favorite writer. And I've heard of him in kind of similar circles to like Karen Slaughter, kind of like thrillery, crimey stuff, um, which I love. I'm definitely getting back into after a bit of a hiatus reading crime, but the blurb of this one is They escape from a secret government project. Two mutant creatures both changed utterly from the animals they once were, and no one who encounters them will ever be the same again. A lonely widower, a ruthless assassin, a beautiful woman, and a government agent, drawn together in a deadly hunt, all four are inexorably, I don't know how to say that word, bad booktuber, propelled towards a confrontation with an evil beyond human imagining. So this is like a cool kind of like supernatural thriller. Um, I've been introduced to like one of the animals like within the first like three chapters because that's all I've read so far and it's a golden retriever. So like I think it's like a like government project golden retriever so like it's really like intelligent. Um, maybe it has superpowers. I kind of hope it has superpowers. That'd be like really cool. But I love dogs and if anything happens to the dog in this, I think I will cry. But I then got some really stunning like hardback collector's editions books, which is so cool. The first one is one I'm going to sit down and read today because it's rather festive and we should stay with a festive theme on Christmas. And that is the Nutcracker. I'll bring it closer to you. I'm quite far away. Um, the Nutcracker, which I love so much, it's so beautiful, and recently, um, if you watched my last vlog, I read Midnight in Everwood, I keep calling it Nevermore because I love that series so much, um, but Midnight in Everwood, I think, um, and it was a Nutcracker retelling, and it was wonderful, it was immensely enjoyable, but through reading it I realised I know very, very little about the actual Nutcracker, and I was thinking of purchasing it, um, next Christmas during the festive season and it's under my tree so I am delighted and my mother knows me far too well. The next two picks are definitely books from my mum and the first one is a stunning collector's edition of Anne of Green Gables. Once again, I'll move it closer to you. It's got that cute foil lettering and on the back it says life is worth living as long as there's a laugh in it. I hope I'm in the same position. Um, my card randomly flashed an error on the screen um, so I hope I fix that and we're back. But Anne of Green Gables is one of my mum's favourite books and um, for some reason I just never read it as a child um, and I mentioned offhandedly wanting to read it. So I now have this stunning copy um, that I'm going to devour so soon. It's just so beautiful! I love it so much! Like these two are going to be like my prized possessions because they are 
stunning. Um, I need to reorganise my bookshelves in the new year, so those two are firmly going to take a main focus on that. But another book is a shared interest between my mum and I is we're both obsessed with Paddington Bear. We love Paddington Bear like that. <laughs> that little bear! He's so small and he's so precious with his little marmalade sandwiches. And I love him so much. Both Paddington movies are some of my ultimate comfort movies. And this says, How to be loved like Paddington, a book on love and friendship. And it comes with like a little postcard that says, you know, like, dear blah blah blah, I love you like Paddington loves marmalade. So I think I'm going to have to give that to my partner because we also love Paddington. But it has the cutest little illustrations on the inside. I will show it to you. Like, look at him. There's like more. Yeah, few little pages illustrated with these sweetest little Paddingtons and I can't wait to add this up. And also, it's really little and really beautiful so I am going to have this read by the end of today and that is another book on my Goodreads reading challenge score. I do have a few more books. I actually have six more books but they are two series so I'm kind of going to talk about them as a whole. Um, we have a Good Girl's Guide to Murder. We have all three. So there's A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, Good Girl, Bad Blood, and As Good as Dead. And I think that's the correct order. I know A Good Girl's Guide to Murder is the first one, but I don't know what the order of the other two. I've wanted to read these for the longest time. I've been quite prejudiced towards YA novels for quite a while. And this time last year, exactly this time last year, um, because I got, like my camera was notifying me of like a year ago and it was me sitting on the airplane, traveling home for Christmas, reading Truly Devious. That was one of the best book series I've ever read. It was a YA mystery, like it followed three books, all the same mystery with a YA protagonist, which just made it so much more compulsively readable than adult ones. And this is another YA mystery series. So the premise of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder is five years ago, schoolgirl Andy Bell was murdered by Sal Singh. The police know he did it, everyone in town knows he did it. But having grown up in the same small town that was consumed by the murder, Pippa Fitzamobi isn't so sure. When she chooses the case as her topic for her final year project, she starts to uncover secrets that someone in town desperately wants to stay hidden. And if the real killer is still out there, how far will they go to keep Pip from the truth? I can't read the blurbs of the other two because um, I have definitely done that in the past and spoiled the ending of the first one by reading the premise of the second one. But I think the same mystery goes throughout all three books, um, which I'm really excited about. And I don't know anyone who hasn't liked these. They have immensely positive reviews. And I also love that through like flicking through this, um, there's quite a lot of different writing formats. I don't know how to describe it, but there's like regular prose, you've got like transcripts of interviews, and we have like text chats. Um, I think there might be something about a podcast. I vaguely remember someone saying about a podcast because apparently this works really well in audiobook. Um, so if that floats your boat, I recommend it. But so excited to dive into these. So, it is going to be a very hard choice between A Good Girl's Guide to Murder or the other series I have for which one I'm going to read first and that is The Cruel Prince. So we have The Cruel Prince, um, The Queen of Nothing and The Wicked King. Once again, I don't know the order um, beside the first one. So I really hope that's correct. If not, I mean, I'm going to double check the order before I read them. But, fingers crossed, that's right. So, the premise of The Good Prince is One terrible morning, Jude and her sisters see their parents murdered in front of them. The fearsome assassin abducts all three girls and brings them to the world of fairy. Mocked and tormented for being merely normal, Jude soon realises that to survive in the treacherous, dangerous world of the royal court, she needs to be as cunning and deceitful as the fae themselves. But the stairway to power is fraught with shadows and betrayal, and looming over all is the arrogant and charismatic Prince Carter. I think my dogs um, are trying to eat the turkey, 
it's not ideal, but this sign is so good. I mean, the quote on the front cover is by Leigh Bardugo, and I really enjoyed Six of Crows and Shadow and Bone, so I mean, she endorses it, it's good. And once again, everyone I follow on social media really, really endorses this. And there's a new one coming out, like, in a week. Um, I did request an advanced copy of it because I knew I was reading these, but I don't think it's arrived. Um, so crying. I probably will purchase the hardback pretty soon, if not, because I am very excited to read it. But as you all know, if you've watched any of my videos, I have gotten so into fantasy this year. So I'm really excited to further this a little bit more with an iconic fantasy series of The Cruel Prince. I also... I have another fantasy series I need to read this year. This isn't one I got now. I got it for my birthday about three years ago um, from my partner and that is Lord of the Rings, which I have never, I have not consumed any Lord of the Rings content. I've never seen the films, I've never read the books, I haven't seen a new show, nothing. One of my favourite cafes in Dundee is actually Lord of the Rings themed and I go in there like an imposter, um, never having read them seen the films but my boyfriend is buying a 4k tv this year so i have been told i need to get on with reading the books so we can watch the entire film set which is good but this on Lord of the rings two very iconic fantasy series i'm gonna read in 2023 2023 i said 2022 and 2023 in the same word and with that we have a 2022 festive reading haul I love it so much, I feel so grateful and so lucky to have been spoiled with so many books. So grateful. My parents, family and friends are all the absolute best. But if you celebrate Christmas and if not, I hope you're having a wonderful festive season and thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon with my favourite books of 2022, which is always an exciting video. Have a great day. Catch you soon.